Back here on HQ, built by the Home Depot, the college football playoff committee will soon give us our first taste of what a 12-team playoff field will look like. The first rankings drop on Tuesday. The final rankings and bracket set to be revealed on December 8th. The first round, the playoff is going to feature eight teams playing on December 20th and 21st. And we now bring in CBS Sports College Football Analyst and two-time Super Bowl champ Brian McFadden and CBS Sports College Football Playoff expert Jerry Palm because the first playoff rankings, which everybody, that's the only thing people care about now, <laughs> will be released on Tuesday. And Jerry, let's start with a quick refresher, if you will, on how this new format shakes out. What are the qualifiers for the 12 playoff spots up for grabs? Yeah, so the one thing that's going to be new, most new, I guess, about the 12-team playoff, other than it's 12 teams, is that five conference champions will get automatic bids, the top five in the rankings. And it doesn't matter where they're ranked. The five highest ranked conference champions will be in the playoff, and the four highest ranked will get buys to the quarterfinal. So this guarantees the group of five at least one conference champion in the playoff. So now they have access. Uh, but it doesn't guarantee that all four major conferences are champions are going to get in. It's the five highest rated, not the four majors plus someone else. So if a, if a conference has a really bad year, you could have two group of five conference champions in this. So that would certainly be interesting. I don't know that we're going to see that this year because the top of these leagues look pretty strong, the majors, that is. Um, and the group of five, uh, you know, Boise State is having a tremendous year led by Heisman candidate Ashton Genty. So I think, you know, we have a pretty good idea who's going to be the group of five representative. But the, the four major conferences are going to get teams in that win their league. And BMAC, when you look at this new format, and Jerry just laid it out perfectly, uh, what really sticks out to you in terms of what are you looking forward to the most with this new playoff format? For me, Jerry laid it out perfectly for us when it comes to the power four winning your conference along with the group of five. But what happens, Jerry, to the team that's not a part of that said conference, any said conference, which is Notre Dame, right? Yep. When you look at having 12 spots now and knowing the rankings will be revealed for the very first time this Tuesday night, where would the committee, how will they view Notre Dame? The last time we saw Notre Dame, they took care of their business easily against Navy, who at that time was ranked in the top 25, 24, if I'm not mistaken. They put up 51 points on, on Navy easily. So when you look at what Notre Dame has done since uh, that horrible loss to Northern Illinois and seeing how they've been able to be a consistent team, and to Jerry's point, the, the team that are involved in a conference, of course, they have a there's they understand where they will fit. Right. But for Notre Dame, we don't know. So we will see a lot learn a lot about a team like Notre Dame who's currently not a part of any conferences and seeing what they view the fighting Irish moving forward, especially they can take care of their business. Yeah, a lot of eyes on the Irish, as that's always the case, I feel like, in college football. Now, we had a top five matchup on Saturday afternoon in Happy Valley. Number four, Ohio State takes down number three, Penn State, for the eighth straight time, handing the Nittany Lions their first loss of the season. Plenty of opportunities for James Franklin after they get back up off the mat. Jerry, how's their playoff fortunes looking following another heartbreaking loss to Ohio State? Yeah, Penn State now really doesn't control their own fate in terms of trying to win the Big Ten, but they can still finish 11-1. and one. Their schedule is going to be decent. It was ranked in, a, in the 50 range uh, prior to the Ohio State game, and obviously their strength of schedule got better today. So 11-1 Penn State is a probable playoff team, uh, barring something really weird happening. So the, it's still in front of them. The, the conference title is not, but the playoff position getting into the 12 somewhere is still in front of Penn State. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you, Jerry. I think what we saw tonight clearly is it's a hard pill to swallow for Penn State fans because they seen this movie over and over and over again. And I apologize for the Penn State fans that have paid to see the same ending to a different movie year after year. But to Jerry's point, with the 12-team playoff format, all you have to do is win out. Yes, you won't get an invitation to Indy to the, for, for the Big Ten title game, but who cares? You still will get into the playoffs. If you finish with only one loss, and that one loss coming from the hands of the Buckeyes, 
you will get into the playoffs. So that is one bright spot compared to what we've seen in years past when they fell in the face against Ohio State and Michigan. They didn't have a shot to get into any significant postseason play when it comes to competing for a championship. But this season, they, they will be okay. But it's going to be difficult, Jerry, for Penn State fans to understand this. They're not going to see the bright, the bright side until probably Wednesday or Thursday. But until then, they're going to be crying, cussing people out, and saying they should fire James Franklin. That's what they're going to do, deal with until Wednesday or Thursday. They will. That, that's exactly right. <laughs> uh, Penn State fans are hungry for wins over Ohio State and Michigan. Uh, not going to happen nah. this year. Now, as for the Buckeyes, a Big Ten championship, Jerry, still very much in their sights. How big of a win was this for Ryan Day and this team? Oh, very much so. Because if they lose, now they've got two losses. And even though those are the great teams, you start to get to the point where you're one more loss away from probably not making the college football playoffs. So, you know, it was huge for them because they stay in play for the Big Ten championship. Also, they stay in play for an at-large spot. They've got a margin for error still, and they're going to have to play Indiana still. So, you know, Oregon, Penn State, Indiana don't play each other, but all three of them play Ohio State. So their, their college football playoff positioning and hopes, uh, in, especially in the case of Indiana, are going to depend on how they do against Ohio State. So uh, Ohio State is going to have a lot to do. If they don't win the Big Ten themselves, they're going to have a lot to say about who does. And BMAC, when you look at Ohio State, how do you think this win really elevates them to a point where not only, you know, Big Ten championship yep. aspirations, but also in the college football playoff as far as seeding? Uh, it, it elevates them in different ways. Let's start with the head coach. I felt like when you look at what Ryan Day has done, he's win ball games, but he's always had issues in major matchups. Number one, it kind of takes some pressure off of Ryan Day because I felt like in this matchup, both coaches were under pressure, but it was more so directed to Ryan Day because of the talent that he has, the luxury of coaching, and all the notable guys that have went to their program to try to compete for a championship. So he got that monkey off his back. Now you talk about more wiggle room when it comes to understanding and knowing what they need to do to get to Indy. To Jerry's point, they already had a loss. Could not afford to have another loss in, in early part of November and thinking you have a shot to get to Indy or Betty at the playoffs. So you still have a wiggle room. And even, let's say, hypothetically speaking, they lose to Indiana. Right. Jerry, I think if they lost to Indiana and still didn't get an invite to, to Indy because of what they did today, they would still get into the playoffs, in my opinion, because of how they won the ball game. They went to Happy Valley, turned Happy Valley into Sad Valley, and they did so without allowing one offensive touchdown. That's dominant, dominant play. Yeah, Ohio State, you're, I mean, you're right. Ohio State, what, what really works for them is that they would be 10-2 and two against a pretty good schedule. They would have played the other three of the top four teams in the Big Ten. So, and Michigan as well, which is not Michigan, but it's still a good team. So, yeah, Ohio State's strength of schedule will carry them through to the college football playoff, even if they slip up again and finish 10-2 and two overall and do not play for the Big Ten title. And Jerry, what about this? I see, and this is a hypothetical we're talking about. Let's say they lose to Indiana. Indiana goes to uh, the Big Ten championship game, right? And they play against Oregon. Indiana loses to Oregon. I see a scenario if that was the case where the Big Ten would at least, bare minimum, get four teams into the playoffs. The four teams would be Penn State, if right. they went out, right. Ohio State, if they went out outside of losing to Indiana, and then, of course, Indiana would get a bid because they made it to the championship game, and their only loss would come from the hands of Oregon, and, of course, Oregon would get in. How do you see that, Jerry, if that hypothetical became a reality? Yeah, and, in fact, I think you're right, and I don't think it matters who wins the championship. It's still those four teams if Ohio State's sitting there with one loss or two and um, Penn State's sitting there with one loss, and you've got two undefeated teams playing for the title – the, both of those teams are getting in, and I think the other two are getting in as well. So it's going to be Big Ten country in the college <laughs> football playoff. Four out of the 12 teams are going to be from the Big Ten land. Now, speaking of the Big Ten, Dan Lanning has his Oregon Ducks as the number one team in the nation, looking the part 9-0 and for the first time since 2012. Jerry, when you watch this team, how much of a gap do you see right now between them and everyone else? I don't think it's a huge gap. 
Um, they, they've just found ways to win the games that they need to win to stay number one. But I don't think they're a dominant team that, that just has to, you know, just roll the their cleats onto the field and, and run, run people over. Uh, when they play good teams, they're getting a fight from those good teams, and they're finding ways to win, which is why, you know, they're the number one team right now. Uh, but they're not invincible. Uh, they're they're one bad day from taking their first loss, or get when they get in the playoff, they're a bad day from going home. I don't think they're a prohibitive number one, but they are a definite number one right now. Okay, so I'm glad you brought that up because it's time for our top four predictions ahead of Tuesday's rankings. You know, BMAC, Oregon has done so many great things this season, but are they a clear number one in your top four? Yeah, my top four, yes, clear cut number one. I have them one, followed by Ohio State with a win today uh, against Penn State on the road. I have them at two. I have UGA. Yes, they struggled for the majority of that ball game against Florida. They won, and we've seen UGA against some of the best in the country and how dominant they can be. And I have Miami undefeated, continuing to roll. Uh, Cam Ward is playing like one of the best. He is the best quarterback in college football, clearly a Heisman front runner as well. Uh, regardless of what is going on with their defense, their, their offense can outscore you. So I have them uh, finalizing my top four. Yeah, we're very similar. I have Oregon number one as well and Miami number four, but I actually have Georgia ahead of Ohio State because of strength of schedule right now. Uh, but I think, you know, those two to me are interchangeable. You could certainly make an argument for Ohio State at number two, and you just did. I think Miami has to be number four because they haven't been quite as dominant. Their schedule isn't quite as good as Georgia and Ohio State, despite the fact that each of those teams has a loss. Right, but with Miami, that offense is one of the best in the nation, if not the best. It's just they haven't played that many strong opponents, and their defense is suspect. Jerry Palm, Brian McFadden, always bringing us the good stuff. And here's a look at the national title odds right now. So Ohio State is the favorite. Then it's Georgia, Oregon. So Oregon not getting a whole lot of love from the betters at plus 450, even though they are the number one team in the nation right now. Then Texas, Miami, and Alabama. Hey, Alabama, they that brand speaks loud, <laughs> very loud.